In the upcoming video, I'm going to talk about an experiment that I did to see how much dry malt extract you really need to use to get a 1040 starter. I did this as part of the process I used to can some wort. I decided that I would try and see what it would take to uh, get the right proportion of DME in a quart of water to give you a 1040 starter. So follow along and uh, you can see what I did. Um, I did cut this out of my uh, entire video that I did the wart canning process in uh, mainly because I thought it was a good experiment and I thought it'd be interesting to other people and you might just want to know this without having to go through the whole video of canning wart but uh, anyway here's a segment of that uh, big video uh, feel free to watch the whole video of wart canning start to finish uh, but be aware this is kind of a middle segment of that video I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting. Uh, reading through a lot of blogs and a lot of websites, uh, a lot of people say uh, that if you put a half a cup per pint of water of DME to the water, that that'll give you a 1040 wart. Um, other people have said uh, 100 grams to 1,000 milliliters. Um, I've also read three and a half ounces by weight. Uh, to a quart. So I'm going to do some experimentation before I do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, measure a half a cup to a pint with this. I'm going to measure three quarters of a cup to a quart for this. A cup to a quart for this. And then I'm going to weigh three and a half ounces to a quart. And I'm going to put them in a boiler. I'm not going to pressure cook them just yet until they dissolve and then I'm going to get my refractometer out and I'm going to check the gravity on each of them and see where they actually stand and see what it really takes. Um, really they say by weight is the best measure because you're getting the actual weight of the malt. Um, other people say uh, it's just as well and just as good to use it by measure. Um, personally I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. I relax and don't worry about it but you know it's going to be close enough regardless but I am kind of curious as to what the differences are going to be so that's going to be my next step you can follow along in the process okay I'm ready to move forward with my experiment um, I got two quarts in a pint jar here what I'm going to do is I'm only going to do three uh, vessels here I'm going to do one quart with three quarters of a cup of DME I'm going to do one quart with three and a half ounces of DME and I'm going to do a pint with a half cup of DME. I figured that'll extrapolate out to a quart with a cup. So we'll see how that comes out. Um, anyway, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, well, I got right here. Put the uh, half cup into my pint here. Okay. And I'm going to I'm just going to put some oh crap some old lids on here. Um, I'll replace these with brand new fresh lids. You never reuse lids when you're canning. Um, this one's just going to be pig pint. Um, this one here, put a lid on it. Call it uh, three quarter cup. This one's going to be 3.5 ounces. And in the past, I think I typically used the three and a half ounces and go ahead and weigh things out, but I'm not 100% sure of that. It's been a while since I've had the can from DME. But as you saw from earlier, all of the all the wort I have right now for starters is dark and I mean it works it's great um, and I usually do cold crash my starters so it doesn't really affect the color of my beer but that's a hassle this way I can just toss it into a lighter beer and not worry about it if I don't have time to cold crash okay I'm gonna add some water to these and uh, we'll move a little forward 
Okay, I've gone ahead and added uh, water to each of my jars here. And if you look, I added it right up to where the bottom of the thread ring is. Did that in all three jars. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and seal these up enough so I can shake them. Although, DME doesn't really dissolve when the water's not hot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, again, this is just temporary with these caps and lids. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I have a double boiler going over here. It's actually my pressure cooker with some water in it. And I'm just gonna set the jars in there temporarily. And let that water heat up and that way the DME will uh, dissolve. I may add a little more water once it's dissolved depending on uh, where it ends up but uh, so that they're all equal in volume so I can test them accurately but we'll go ahead and let this go for a few minutes and come back. Okay, my uh, wort is still liquefying. Um, I'm going to do one more thing here. Um, I weighed out another three and a half ounces of uh, dry malt extract. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to see how much that measures out to. So I've got a measuring cup here. And it has markings going up to a cup and up to... Uh, um, 250 milliliters, which I guess doesn't do me any good because that's not a dry measure I mean, or a weight measure. But I'm just going to see carefully how much volume this really is. You know, if I found out that three and a half ounces is three quarters of a cup, it's good enough for me. And actually, it looks like it's less than that. Um, looks to me like it's about two thirds of a cup. Okay, here's where you are right now. Um, I just measured out a uh, thousand grams or a hundred grams of this and it ended up being about three and a half ounces hundred grams um, weight wise uh, it was about two-thirds of a cup so remember that two-thirds of a cup per liter um, I use about two-thirds of a cup apparently for a quart now I'm gonna take my uh, jars apart here uh, they've been in the hot water and if you look, I'm going to hold it, it's a little warm still, so I'm going to have to be real careful. But the DME is pretty much dissolved. Okay. So now, same thing with these. And DME is dissolved. It's actually even started doing some protein uh, coagulation in there, which is kind of weird. And last but not least, the pint one, same thing, the DME is dissolved in there. So, I'm going to check my gravity. Um, this pint one probably has cooled down more than the other ones. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Now remember, this was half a cup for two cups of water. Um, I'm going to take my spoon here. Okay, and my refractometer. Just take a, take a little bit out of here, stir it up a little. Okay. Take the drops on there. And wow, holy cow. 
That says 1.090. I don't know if I'll be able to. I've never tried this, but let's see if I can put this in here. No. No, that's not going to work. That's a bit ridiculous. Uh, 1.090, I really find that hard to believe. Try it one more time. Yeah, that's right there. About 88 to 90. Okay. No. That was a half a cup of DME to two cups of water. Okay. This one here is three quarters of a cup of DME to four cups of water or a quart. Now that gives me, reading it right at around 1070, 1.070. Yeah, that says 1.065. That's a good thing. So that was three quarters of a cup, 1.065. Right here is three and a half ounces by weight. And remember that worked out to be about two thirds of a cup. Stir it up real good. one point oh five oh so I know my refractometer is pretty accurate um, I have compared it to a uh, hydrometer and it works pretty well um, I'm gonna try this one one more time just for a second check yeah, about 1.049. Um, so it looks like the three and a half ounces, or maybe a little less, gives you the right proportion, um, or two thirds of a cup. Uh, I think I'm going to try one more experiment uh, with. Let me see. Try to do this. Okay, I used half a cup in my pint jar here. What I think I'm going to do is. I'm going to pour that into this quart jar here. And I'm going to add some water to raise it up to a quart and see where it comes out. Um, this is just an experiment, so um, I'm going to probably just dump all these together and get a wart of the right consistency or the right gravity before I can. But what I really wanted to show you at this part in addition to experimenting to see how much you really need to use is the fact that you can put the uh, DME right in the jar uh, add the water to it put it on the stove or put it in your pressure cooker and it will dissolve as part of the pressure cooking process but, okay I'm gonna add some water to this make sure it's not too hot it's not gonna bust the glass All right, there's half a cup of DME and a quart of water. Yeah, let's do that real good. One point oh four three. 
that's amazing. Um, just for the sake of uh, demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to put it in a hydrometer and let it come down to room temperature and see what happens. So I'm going to stop the video right now. We'll come back. I took some of the wort out of the jar that I threw the pint of wort and DME into and added another pint of water to and that was one quart of water to a half a cup of DME. I measured it with my refractometer and uh, it measured out right at exactly 1040. So just to be uh, super sure and super accurate, I went ahead and put some in this hydrometer here, cooled it down, I had a temperature sensor in it, and it's at exactly 1042. And I'm gonna see if I can get this just right here and bring the camera over and show you. And hopefully I can get this thing focused in and get it close enough to where you can read yet yeah, still stay in focus all right there you go right there 1040 right next to the water the Wharton hydrometer was 1040 um, and uh, that pretty much proves that uh, you need a half a cup of DME per quart of water there you have it. Um, if you want to do a 1040 wart with light dry malt extract, use a quarter cup of DME to a pint of water and a half a cup of DME to a quarter of water. That's what it takes. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to watch the full video of the whole canning process. Take care.